So if you said A or B to the question that we posed at the end of the last video, then you think like Aristotle. Um, and that's to say that you're incorrect. But it's okay. Um, Aristotle was actually one of the most brilliant thinkers in, antiqu in antiquity. Uh, and, you know, by philosophers, is still very highly regarded. In fact, the physics and the ideas about physics that he had lasted for, you know, almost 2,000 years. So you're in pretty good company if that's what you thought. But what happened to change this? Well, Galileo performed an experiment, or at least claimed to have performed an experiment, where he dropped two different masses of the shame, same shape but different weights from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And, you know, notice that when they fell to the ground, they both hit at the exact same time. So it was really an experiment. And the introduction of ins experiments into science is what, um, is what really brought on, you know, the scientific part of the Renaissance. And one of the biggest contributors to that was Newton. And you can read about him in your textbook. You can read about him, you know, pretty much anywhere because Newton is really the person that started physics. Um, and not only was he the first physicist, um, he developed, you know, a set of laws. And, so, and they're laws that actually still hold to this very day. Okay? So Newton's first law... says that an object moving at a constant speed in a fixed direction remains the same unless it interacts with another object. So in other words, if there's something out in space moving at some speed v and it never interacts with anything else, it will never slow down. It will never speed up. It will always move at that same constant speed. And that's Newton's first law. And it's one of the first things we're going to explore in this class. Okay? But there's something that is kind of snuck into that definition, an interaction, right? What is an interaction? So when we talk about an interaction, you know, this is almost kind of a circular argument, but we're saying that an interaction is something that changes the motion of an object. So if there's something, be it another particle, you know, a wall, a light wave, whatever it is that changes the motion of this so that at some later point you know, we have a new speed v prime, that's an interaction. So why is it that it took 2,000 years for people to figure this out? And why, if Aristotle's so smart, um, didn't he know this? Um, and the reason is because not all interactions are created equal. So for example, if we have something like um, a balloon and we have something like uh, you know, a very large rubber ball, there's interactions happening that we don't see. For example, there's, a, you know, as we know, there's actually particles in the air. And those particles are bouncing off both the balloon and the ball as they fall toward the ground. And so, you know, the size of those objects and the shape of them uh, and the density is actually making a difference um, between the way that they interact with those with those air molecules. And so it's these little interactions that Aristotle didn't even know were there, uh, you know, that completely and totally changed the physical results. In the example we showed in the last lecture, where we had a feather and a hammer, it's the same thing. We have, on Earth, we have all of these little tiny air molecules that are bouncing off these. And the feather gets hit by these, and you know, it's these interactions that keep 
slow the feather down, right? They, pre they provide air resistance, and that makes it fall much slower than the hammer. But even regular objects, for example, if we just have a block and it's sliding along the ground, we, knew, we now know that there's a frictional force, and that force of friction is actually an interaction between that object and the ground, and it's that interaction that slows it. So if you took the ground away and you just put the object there, the object would, be, would continue to go. So it's really this idea of interactions and that being what changes an object's um, velocity. Um, more specifically, as we'll see, it's momentum. This is really the idea that took us um, from Aristotle's view of physics that didn't work and was incorrect to Newton's, um, which is you know the physics that everything that we've built on in the last 400 years is you know is based on at the very foundation.